This year's election has Concord students in full swing. See what they're doing to make a difference coming up next on WMLT. Welcome to WMLT on PBS. I'm Rachel Shelton. And I'm David Burnside. To get in the spirit of election season, one Concord class is actually stepping up to the challenge of registering new voters. Rudy Raines has more on how the class expects to get students involved in the upcoming election. With election season in full swing, it's hard to not get caught up in the patriotic excitement and hype. Everyone wants to be a part of this memorable election, including the students of Concord University. And one small class on campus is doing more than its share to get students involved. The brand new civic engagement class at Concord decided it wanted to take on the task of registering students to vote and also wanted to increase the awareness about the importance of the student involvement in this year's election. Everything that's brought to election and the candidates, you know, that affects us firsthand. College students have to realize, as any other citizens, that it is, it is, um, they have power, and this power they have to realize by voting. Dr. Corey Williams thought with the upcoming election, this was the perfect time to add this type of class to the curriculum, and he felt comfortable letting his students handle the task of getting others registered. Uh, sometimes we need to just let people act. And, and we'll be surprised at the benefits of it. We truly are Along with registering well, others to vote, a few students like yeah, Jeff Zutal have been assigned the task of making speeches encouraging students to register to vote. And we're in a unique position. We're one of the few countries where our voices can be heard, you know, and as college students I think we learned that, you know, our voices are important. And as Corey Williams has his students practicing their speeches, he hopes in the coming days they will fill the seats in this auditorium with students eager to make a difference. Rudy Raines, WMLT News, Athens. With the 2008 presidential primary really heating up, Concord students have been heating up as well. It seems everyone has their opinions about the candidates and their issues. Kelsey Spurlock has more. The 2008 election is proving to be historic and interesting, with Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama competing for the Democratic nomination. A very interesting campaign. Um, on the Democratic side, we'll have uh, either the first uh, uh, woman uh, presidential nominee for a major party or the first African-American nominee for a major party, so that, that's historic. College students often don't realize the importance of voting. The group that's least likely to vote are college-age people. So I think it's very important to register to vote and to participate. I spoke with an independent, Democratic, and Republican student and got their opinion on the election. Barack Obama would be good for our nation right now, but Hillary, I think, will do a good job just like her husband did. There's been a few that's shown some emotions, such as Hillary Clinton. It's interesting to see this could be the first woman president that we do have. Democrat. I have to go with Hillary. She showed emotion in New Hampshire, won the state, and said that she'd like to see our country pull back from the, the dip it's going in. They're making a lot of mistakes. I've been swaying back and forth between voting Democrat and Republican. Um, I really like Hillary Clinton. I think she'd be a good president, but then again, I like John McCain. So over spring break, take the time to register to vote. You can register to vote by mail, going to your local registration location, or DMV. From Athens, this is Kelsey Spurlock. One thing that always has students excited, though, is the thought of spring break. And luckily for Concord students, it's right around the corner. We decided to see what some students' plans were for the 2008 spring break. Actually going to Huntington, West Virginia. We're going to go to the Funny Bone Comedy Club. We're going to go tour Pullman Square. Um, we might even go on a rafting trip once we get back. So hopefully it'll be fun. I'm going to Myrtle Beach. Well, for spring break, I'm going back home to Baltimore. Away from school, yes, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and I'm going um, to Miami to go visit my brother for um, just uh, like a couple of days, whatever, just have some fun, chill out with my family down there. And then on the way back, stop to New York and visit my other brother, and then back home to Baltimore. I'm uh, going camping with my brothers and my cousin. 
While students are finishing up their final week of classes before spring break, one event happening at the end of March has everyone excited. Student involvement in Concord's Relay for Life in the past is one of the top in the state. And as Arden Hamrick found out, organizers are expecting another outstanding year. Spring is in the air, and with spring comes one of Concord University's favorite events, Relay for Life. All around campus, you can see the color purple popping up everywhere as students strive to make money for cancer research. It's about raising money for the American Cancer Society. The American Cancer Society does a lot of great things for those with cancer and for their families, and Relay for Life is one way that all of us can get involved and help. If I know one organization is selling Krispy Kreme donuts, it's a win-win situation. You can pay $5 and get a box of donuts and, and help the American Cancer Society. Um, other events that have been going on, uh, they've had events where they've asked for donations. Um, they've had, um, I know they're going to have a basketball tournament, I think, a cornhole tournament, and, uh, and then some events going on the day of Relay for Life, too. Relay for Life is a great opportunity for many students to get involved in the fight against cancer. I am. I'm on the public relations workshop team and I'm actually going to be out of town the weekend of the walk but I'm still on the team. I'm my team's captain and I get to still participate in the fundraising, raising money for it and then the rest of my team will walk on the weekend of March 29th. I really don't, I really don't know that much about it but if, it, if I'm invited to join a team or if I look more into it, I guess I will. Not this year. I'm actually not at this one. I'm, I do really feel like in Ohio. This is Arden Hemrick, WMLT News, Athens. Coming up after the break, we'll check out the latest publications circling around the Concord campus. And Brian Arnold gives us a look at sports. Stay with us. <laughs> Brian Arnold is here with us now to give us the latest in Concord sports. Brian, what do you have for us today? Both the men and women's basketball teams found early success in the WVIAC tournament. Led by 18 points from WVIAC first-teamer Sam Nestor, the Lady Lions defeated Allerson Broadus 80-65 in the first round, before falling short against West Virginia Wesleyan 65-53. Nestor again led the team with 15 points, and she was named to the all-tournament first team. The Lady Lions finished the season with 20 wins and 9 losses, recording their second 20-win season in a row. Before last year, they had never topped 20 wins in a single season. The senior Lady Lions finished their careers with the most wins of any class in Concord women's basketball history. On the other end of the spectrum, the men faced Davis and Elkins in the first round and came away with the win 105-96, a season high for the men's team. All WVIAC first teamer Danny Parker led the Lions with 27 points and 10 rebounds. In the quarterfinal, the Lions held close but fell to number one Pitt Johnstown 72 to 68. Danny Parker led the Lions again with 23 points and 11 rebounds, leading him being named to the All WVIAC tournament first team. The Lions finished the season with 15 wins and 14 losses. After finishing last season with an overall record of 24 and 21 and a 13 and 7 record in the WVIAC Southern Division, the Concord University baseball team is picked to finish second in their division this coming season. The Mountain Lions started the season splitting the four-game series with Pitt Johnstown, then moved on to sweep Salem International in their four-game series. They will be traveling to Savannah, Georgia over spring break for the Savannah Invitational Tournament. Next school year, Concord University is adding two new sports to its athletic program. Along with women's golf, men's soccer will be premiering in 2008. Former women's soccer coach Steve Barrett, who will be taking over the men's team next season, has a bright outlook for his new squad. I've been busily recruiting, scheduling, and uh, we will have a team here in the fall playing a full conference schedule, uh, 16 games with a conference schedule, and we'll have a team hopefully that will be competitive based on the way the recruiting's gone. Well, i tell you what, David, I am really looking forward to seeing some men's soccer on this campus for a change. That sounds exciting. 
It seems lately that everywhere you turn, someone is coughing or sneezing. With the flu running rampant right now, it's hard to stay up to date on what the latest treatments are. James Dauphiny has more on how students are trying to stay healthy. Every year, scientists predict which strains of the flu will come to America the next year. Usually, the vaccine prevents 70 to 90 percent. However, this year it mutated, so the vaccine is only working at about 40 percent. Eleven states have reported flu outbreaks two weeks later. Forty-four states have reported in. Now only Florida is left. Athens family practice has become a regular stop for many Concord students due to the recent outbreaks of the flu. We spoke with officials inside earlier, but they were unable to comment on an interview because of the overwhelming amount of students who are spending more time in the waiting room than in the classroom. The teachers weren't surprised when they got doctor's notes because so many students had been getting the flu this semester. So. The flu is spreading rapidly this semester due to the fact that students are touching many of the same objects. A precaution we could all take this season we just simply wash our hands. And it's still hard to get out and come over and um, miss two classes today because I can't really breathe and I'm trying not to get anybody else sick. In Athens, I'm James Dauphin. The new Reflex magazine will soon be landing in the hands of Concord students. David Burnside took an in-depth look at what we can expect from the latest issue of this Concord Arts publication. If you are an artist here at Concord, you may have opportunities you're not taking advantage of. Reflexes magazine may be just for you. Reflex is um, a magazine published by Concord University students for university students and the arts contained in the magazine are made by Concord University students from like every major that possibly is. You don't have to be an art major or English major to submit your stuff, to submit your visual arts, poems, whatever it is that you want to submit, we're accepting as long as it can be printed. Reflexes magazine is not just for painters or poets. It can be a potter too. It's really a good experience for students in a lot of different ways. Number one, we, we do have a lot of students who write. Um, we have all the students in the creative writing class that Dr. O'Haynes makes them submit things, first of all. So that's a good experience for them because they want to be writers. Plus we have a lot of students who aren't English majors, but they write. And so this is a good kind of outlet. They've had stuff hanging around and they want to do something with it. Um, and then with the, the art students, I think it's, it might even be a more valuable kind of experience in a way. Um, because it's, it's harder to you know, create a sculpture and pass it around to your friends. You can do that with a poem. You can't, you know, most people don't do it with their art too much. Um, and so it gives them the experience to show some stuff off and, and maybe reveal a side of themselves that people didn't know. If you're interested in being a part of Reflexes magazine, then you can come and get information at the organization fair on Saturday, March 29th, 10 o'clock a.m. We have our own little table that's going to set it up. And if you have any interest in laying out magazines or publishing or writing, whatever, whatever you want to do, you can come and ask information from us so you can be a part of Reflex. David Burnside, WMLT News, Athens. Students can expect the new magazine to be in their hands by May 1st. Concord faculty members Dr. Joseph Manzo, Dr. Timothy Manlin, and Professor Fernando Porez will present their photographs of street musicians at Concord Mus University's Alexander Fine Arts Center from February 25th through March 14th, 2008. The exhibit entitled Street Noise is a collection of photographs taken over a number of years showcasing the lives of street musicians from around the world. The photographs have been taken in places such as Scotland, Spain, Japan, and many cities in the United States. The reception and gallery viewings of, the street noise, of street noise are free to the general public. Gallery viewing hours will be noon to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, and upon request. And that's all we have for today. For Rachel Shelton and the rest of WMLT, I'm David Burnside. We'll see you next time.